Hey guys, um, so what we're going to be talking about today is limiting reactants and percent yields, one of the hardest concepts in stoichiometry. But if you think about it, it's actually pretty simple. You can think of limiting reactants like you're making a sandwich. Okay. In order to make a sandwich, each sandwich I want to have two pieces of bread, three pieces of lunch meat, and one slice of cheese. However, say I'm running low on my meat and my cheese, and I have six slices of bread, 12 pieces of lunch meat, and five slices of cheese. Okay. As you can see, though I have enough lunch meat to make four sandwiches, I only have enough bread to make three sandwiches. So I'm not going to be able to make four sandwiches. I'm only going to be able to make three. So I'll have three sandwiches. I'll have some leftover lunch meat and some leftover cheese, okay? which makes the bread my limiting reactant. It's whichever one leads to the least product. If I used all my cheese, I could make five sandwiches. But guess what? I can't use all my cheese because I don't have enough bread. Chemical reactions work in much the same way. For example, if you look here, okay, in a reaction, um, the combustion reaction of hydrogen and oxygen to produce water, we need two moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of oxygen gas to create two moles of water. That's my balanced chemical reaction. So if I have 10 moles of hydrogen gas and seven moles of oxygen gas, okay, my hydrogen gas is gonna be my limiting reactor because I only have enough to make 10 moles of, or to make 10 moles of water. Oxygen, okay, oxygen, I have seven moles of oxygen, but for every one mole of oxygen, I can make two moles of water. So with seven moles of oxygen, I couldn't theoretically make 14 moles of water. However, I don't have enough hydrogen to make that 14 moles of water. I only have enough hydrogen to make 10 moles of water. So after the reaction, I'm going to have my 10 moles of water, two leftover oxygen molecules, but no more hydrogen gas. Okay, That was my limiting reactant, so all of it reacted. My oxygen gas is what we call in excess. Okay. Percent yield is very closely related. When we figure out our limiting reactants and we figure out how much product we're going to make, that will tell us our theoretical yield. Okay? Theoretical yield. However, life is imperfect, neither are chemical reactions, so our actual yield will most often be a little bit lower than what we expect that we could get based on what we're given. And our actual yield divided by our theoretical yield will give us a decimal. We times it by 100 to get it in percent form, and that we call our percent yield. Okay, so we're going to work through a problem that ties in all of these things. If you are working on your summer assignment, it is number three under limiting reactants and percent yield. Something else. Okay, so this problem says determine the percent yield of water when 68.3 grams of hydrogen reacts with 85.4 grams of oxygen and 86.4 grams of water are collected. Here's the balanced chemical reaction that we're looking at. I'm going to start by writing that reaction bigger so we can write some information by it. Okay. So let's write what we know. We know we have 68.3 grams of hydrogen reacting with 85.4 grams of oxygen, and when we do that reaction, we're collecting 86.4 grams of water. Okay, now just looking at this very quickly, um, I know that hydrogen is pretty light, so this is a lot of hydrogen, okay? The molar mass of hydrogen is just 2.02, .02, so that is a whole lot of hydrogen. Well, not quite as much as oxygen. Even though I only need half as much oxygen, I'm still thinking that the oxygen is going to be my limiting reactant. But we're going to actually do out the math to figure it all out first. Okay. So we need our molar masses. The molar mass of H2 hydrogen is just 1.01. .01. So if we have two hydrogens, it is 2.02 .02 grams per mole. 
two oxygens is, oops, 32.00 grams per mole, and water is 18.02 grams per mole. Again, those numbers come from the, the masses on the periodic table. Okay, so right away you can see here this is a whole lot of hydrogen and not as much oxygen. Okay, we want to know the percent yield of water. We have our actual yield. What we're looking for is our theoretical yield. But this number right here, that is our actual yield. Okay, so we're going to find our limiting reagent. And we're going to find our limiting reagent by solving it out. If all of this reacted, how much water would I get? If all of this reacted, how much water will I get? And just like I can't make more sandwiches than I have bread, I can't make more water molecules than I have either of these. So whichever number is the lowest, that's going to be my limiting reactant, and that's going to be my theoretical yield. Okay? So let's first solve it out if all of the H2 reacts. Okay? So is a mass to mass problem. So I'm going to start with my known 68.3 grams of hydrogen gas. Do my little ladder thing so I can start converting. I know that there are 2.02 .02 grams of hydrogen gas for each one mole of hydrogen gas. I know that if I react two moles of hydrogen gas, I'm going to get two moles of water. And again, that's a mole ratio. These numbers here come from the coefficients in the balanced chemical reaction. And then I know that one mole of water has a mass of, oops, 18.02 grams. Then I get to plug it all into my calculator. Okay, 68, oops, turn on. 68.3 times 2 times 18.02. Multiply across, divide, oopsies, divide by whatever's on the bottom. And I got 609. Okay, so if all of that hydrogen were to react, I would get 609 grams of water. That's a lot of water. Let's see what would happen if all of my oxygen were to react. Okay. It's going to be a similar setup. I start with my known, but this time I'm talking about my oxygen. Okay, I know that one mole of oxygen has a mass of 32.00 grams. I know that for each one mole of oxygen I react, I'm going to get two moles of water. And then it just becomes the same as last time. I know that one mole of water has a mass of 18 Point zero two grams. Okay, and I forgot to on the last one, but always check your units. Grams of oxygen cancels out with grams of oxygen. Moles of O2 and moles of O2. Moles of H2O and moles of H2O. Okay, my units are good. And now I plug it all into my calculator. 85.4 times 2 times 18.02 equals that divided by 32 times 1 times 1 so just 32 and I get 96.18 or 96.2 grams okay so then I look at this if these two things react am I gonna get 609 grams the most that I could possibly get if all the hydrogen reacts or am I going to get 96.2 grams? Okay, just like with the sandwiches, you always have to go by the least. Okay, so this is going to be my theoretical yield. 
okay? Which means oxygen is my limiting reagent. So all of the oxygen gas is going to react, okay? All of the oxygen gas is going to react and form water. And then we're going to have some leftover H2 that doesn't have any oxygen left to react with. Okay, now let's go ahead and find the percent yield. I'm running out of room here, but... The formula for the percent yield is actual divided by theoretical, and then you times it by 100. Just like when you figure out your percentage on a test. You take what you actually got right, divided by what you theoretically could have gotten right, and you times it by 100. That's your percent on a test. That's your yield in chemistry class. So my actual yield, you'll remember, was 86.4. So 86.4 grams divided by my theoretical yield, 96.2 grams. I times it by 100 to get it in percent form, and I come out with 89.8%. Okay, cool?